Joining us tonight, Jeff Rowe, founder of Axiom Strategies, and Doug Schoen, former Clinton advisor, Democratic pollster. Gentlemen, thanks for being here. Jeff, Thank you. let's get uh, 30,000 feet first to look at last night and what you take from it. Yeah, I think the immovable object met the irre 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 irreversible force. And, uh, you know, we'd like to have election midterms to be a referendum, but the Democrats made it a choice, and that, that hurt some of our gains. It was a split decision. We wanted a unanimous decision, but we didn't get it. And so the voters aren't convinced yet we have another election cycle to, to turn that page. Yeah, Doug, what'd you take from it? Yeah, I, I think it was a very good night for the Democrats, given the expectations before uh, Election Day. Uh, basically, we're a polarized country. Um, Democrats came out, notwithstanding the bad economic news that they were facing. A very big win for Joe Biden personally. Uh, a great night for Ron DeSantis. A problematic night for Donald Trump, given that Masters is behind in Arizona. Dr. Oz lost. Bullduck lost in New Hampshire. Uh, and Herschel Walker is trailing by about a point uh, in Georgia. So that's what I take. But uh, Jeff's view is basically right. Yeah. You know, President Biden just wrapped up uh, this news conference, and he was asked specifically about what he takes from it, what change he would make from it. Take a listen. What in the next two years do you intend to do differently uh, to change people's uh, opinion of the direction of the country, particularly as you contemplate a run for president in 2024? Nothing. I believe we took the right steps for the country and for the American people. In fact, if you look at the polls, overwhelming majority, I don't look them much anymore because I'm not quite sure how to read them anymore. Uh, I hope you are uncertain as well. Um, but uh, overwhelming majority of American people support the elements of my economic agenda. Now, is that what you took from it, Doug? No, it is. And I don't think they do. I actually think that it was a mobilization of the Democratic base around issues like abortion, the fact that former Presidents Obama and Clinton got involved to get out the vote, and that uh, the Republicans, and I think Jeff was right in suggesting, didn't close the sale, didn't come up with the kind of positive argument that Governor DeSantis so compellingly made in Florida. You know, uh, Jeff, we have the Fox News voter analysis and the issues that most it was most important to people. And the economy jobs was number one by far. But number two in our list was abortion. Uh, do you think that that I've heard you say that it's a short term play uh, that might have implications later for Democrats? Yeah, I think they're they're creating a real problem with their base. Hispanics are, are more pro-life than than whites are. Uh, African Americans are more pro-life than they are Republican. And so I think their obsession with Trump and their obsession with abortion will cost them in the long term. In the long term. And, and let's make, make it clear, we won last night. I think we're gonna find out for sure if we won on December 6th in Georgia in the Senate. But we, we, it's, it's tough to beat an incumbent United States Senator who's gonna have 150 million bucks at their disposal and an operation based on turning out their voters. And they did a nice job of that, and that halted some of our gains. And but I think of their obsession with that being essentially a two-issue party, it will help them when 100 million people are turning out. It's going to help them get 50 million of their voters out. But in a presidential election with 125 to 150 million, I think it's going to cost them. Do you think that former President Trump factored into this, Jeff? Uh, you know, he comes out, that there's this rumor that he's going to declare at that J.D. Vance rally. And then the close from Democrats is a threat to democracy, which a lot of people took as kind of a veiled Trump reference. Yeah, I think that's it's theoretical about the threat to democracy, but but I don't think he plays into it as much as people want to, nor any more than Obama plays into it. When President Trump is getting more votes than our own candidates are getting, then he's an asset to utilize to motivate your your base. Uh, and if every single person that turned out for President Trump voted for our candidates last night, we would have won overwhelmingly. So it's tough to make the case that he hurts for sure. Uh, there's an argument to make that candidates matter. We the Democrats had headwinds. And, and to fight against. And we had candidates that, that couldn't make the sale. When you're running up against an a incumbent United States senator or incumbent member of Congress with that much money, you better pack a lunch because they're going to be tough to beat. 
You know, Jeff's right, Doug, that we don't know how these races are going to go yet. And it's possible the Democrats could eke out wins in, in Nevada and Arizona or it could go the other way. And Georgia then becomes, uh, you know, the the control, as I, I pointed on the map earlier. But next cycle, Doug, uh, it does not set up as a great environment for for Democrats as you look two years down the road. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And where I think Jeff is exactly right, the Democrats need an affirmative agenda beyond um, democracy, uh, election denial by Donald Trump and his allies, the abortion issue, and steady as we go. Biden has made reference today to being more bipartisan, reaching across the aisle. He's got to do that if he wants to have a real shot at re-election, especially if there's a nominee other than Donald Trump. Jeff, uh, Doug, we appreciate it. Um, overall, you. very quickly, gentlemen, did the polls get it right, wrong? Were they way off? Jeff first, then Doug? Yeah, I think they're, they're pretty close. I mean, we, we had a lot of anticipation and, and a lot of energy at the end that wasn't really reflected in the polls. I think it was wishful thinking on our part. But the polls were pretty close to being on. And so uh, there's some lessons, though. It's very hard and getting very expensive to poll people that don't want to answer the phone. And when you call 100 people and you get 1.7 to answer, we're not going to be conducting polling for very many more cycles. Doug? I, I would just say, Brett, that we've so underpolled Republicans for so many years. All of us in the business thought that there would be a hidden Republican vote hmm. that in most instances did not show up and did not manifest itself in the poll, in the polls or at on election day. Overcorrected, maybe. Um, exactly. Well, I'm just happy to not talk about polls for a little while. Um, thank you very Me much, too. gentlemen. I appreciate it. Right. Up next.